Thank you very much. Um, this is a complete change of pace. It's a new poem. Those of you uh, who are sitting in the front row are starting to look very apprehensive. Don't, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, um, I keep all my drafts together. So this is the first handwritten draft. So, so I've got the full fossil record of the poem's development here, for better or worse. The poem is actually a page and a half. So, uh, and it's, this is gonna be in the walrus in uh, some issues fairly soon, I think. It's called Baffled in Ashdod, Blind in Gaza. And the poem came about, I was um, browsing or uh, reading the uh, Guardian Weekly website and found this small news item, uh, which quickly disappeared from the news cycle, but I was quite um, moved by it in, for various reasons and decided to write this poem. But I'll just um, read you the, the italicized uh, expl explanatory note that's just under the title. Uh, Eden Abergill, former Israeli Defense Forces soldier who in August 2010 posted photos of herself smiling beside bound and blindfolded Palestinian prisoners. She labeled her Facebook album, The Army, Best Time of My Life. So baffled in Ashdod, blind in Gaza. Eden, Abergill, Eden of Ashdod, you only did what any young recruit might do. What I might have done myself, a little scared, a little stoned, on your own strength, Eden, as if each beautiful bullet you packed were a pill, designer hybrid of Percocet and blow, to anneal you against all that's frail and slow, that's bound beyond help. And so these Facebook pics and that bit of bad press, don't worry, Eden, the news, save on Al Jazeera and in the tabloids of Tehran, has already moved on. You don't get it. You protest. Your little shoot killed no one. So then, why are the great Jews the poets and performers, the scientists, inventors, philosophers, reformers, those truest people of the book, all weeping quietly in their tombs. Paul Celan, Hannah Arendt, Almond Bitter Mandelstam, Marx and Einstein, all of them sad insomniacs of the hinterlife, tallowing hours away in the earth to understand this Facebook, as well as the smirk this now world wears failed future that won't leave them to sleep, not even the adamant suicides, Benjamin, Levy, Salan, especially not the suicides. And you yourself sit baffled in Ashdod, Eden, wondering why no one did quite catch the joke. Meantime, the army's marketing folks Photoshop your face to a blur, but too late, you're famous. Your poses pathogenic, spreading via tweets and texts and sickening, sickening no one at all. We've all gone immune, all but the hopeful dead, though of course they're dead and can't die again of our indignities. Eden, Eden of Ash, your grandparents were the Nazi war. Eden of Ashdod, der Tod is still in the story. The frontier between millennia didn't keep it out. The human future didn't phase it out. Now it's posted, grinning on your wall. Let every wall wail. Thanks. Thanks. I'm gonna read a poem called Jet Lag, um, and it's, again, it's got a very short, semi-explanatory subtitle. Uh, this is June Arkhangelsk. So it's set in Archangel, a strange town uh, up above the Arctic Circle on the White Sea in Russia. Oh, jet lag. <clears throat> it's night in your bones, though noon. A no one room drugged with sunlight of a skewed latitude, the fizz in capillaries behind the eyes red rind, unhoused stalling hydraulics of the heart. The insomniac lens of the sun deepens this lag and dizzies is disinclined to set, reset this body clock, wonky, jarred as a man who bends to rinse his face clean of a night's journey and straightens to meet himself above the sink. No mirror, his face drywall. Such times a phantom tourist might urge to mind moments that lodge you deep in a life. When you first heard last century's best tenor, Yossi Björling, skewer the sky note in Ohelga Nat and swore no more lies and of course still lied, 
but less and less as years went and years went and that high C went on compounding in your soul or for the first time kissed her breasts in the fire alley of a mountain town under the startled brain waves of the aurora borealis or hiked the low cliffs of Naxos with the child on your back, her weight bracing your step to soil, so at last you felt present, sheathed in sheer being, she chanting the genesis of all she spied, lending back through the ear's narrowed estuary that urgent inventory. These things you summon to seeing, to rudder you in the real, in a no one room, with night in your bones. Um, I forgot to mention before I started to read, read that poem, uh, I mentioned Yossi well, Björling. Um, some of you will be familiar with his uh, fantastic singing, but a lot of people are, aren't really familiar with him. Caruso's widow considered him the greatest tenor of the last century after Caruso, of course. Um, what you should do if, if you like um, uh, big tenors, uh, listen to his recording of O Holy Night. It's O Helga Not in Swedish. You can find it on YouTube. It's better to download it from iTunes so you can really blast it on a good stereo and hear it. When he hits the high C, I play this for a lot of friends, including some really hardcore, badass friends. Everyone starts, everybody starts weeping. It's when he hits that high C, everyone just breaks down and starts crying because it, it's the most powerful vocal performance I've ever heard. So I, I can't, uh, can't recommend that too highly.